Hey YouTube, this is Finger Eleven Yo. This will be a video on uh, choosing your corals and different types of parasites and how to prevent getting them. Um, first, we're going to start out with how to choose your coral. Uh, first thing you're going to look for is make sure there's no bleaching or death on the coral. If there is death and it is um, covered with algae, it is most likely because of the algae or that the coral has, the death has been there for so long that the immediate threat has passed and that algae has started to grow over what is now rock instead of coral. Um, so don't don't necessarily think that the coral is dying if the death is gray, but if the death death is still white, then you're taking a big risk. Um, polyp extension definitely look for. Um, it will show how the coral is doing and just really look for what type of lighting it is under because if you put it under your lights usually if your lights are brighter than the fish doors it will color up um, a lot of times what happens is the corals turn browner just so that they can absorb more light because the darker the color the more light they absorb um, so that's something to look forward to they might actually color up once you put them in your tank uh, are they under natural sunlighting? They're under natural su sunlighting. They don't look a lot better in your tank. Um, so don't get discouraged if you see a coral out and under natural sunlight. Say someone's growing it in a greenhouse. Don't don't think oh that's what it's gonna look for look like when it's gonna be in my tank. I guarantee you it will be five times more colorful inside of your tank because of the um, artificial sunlight. Um, if you do see bleaching, um, bleaching in different spots across the coral is usually parasitic. Um, or even if it's going from the base up is usually parasitic. Um, for corals like this, this is my Welsophilia I picked up and then the other coral that was at the top is actually a pink pastrata. But this is a Wells Ophelia. Um, one thing you want to look for for them is no tissue loss. Um, a lot of times what happens is they will get stung during transportation by other corals and they will get damaged. But you really want to make sure there's little to no tissue loss on the coral. Uh, that that's a pretty big point on these Welsophilias. Otherwise, they're pretty. It's pretty uncommon for them to get a disease. Um, but I dip them anyways. Right here is an elegance coral. This is a major problem in the reef aquarium. A lot of people get these, and their local fish stores order them in from Indonesia and. Most of the Indonesian elegances are deep water and they get a protozoan on them which will actually eat them. So if you if you order one, ask your local fish store where it's from, make sure it's from Australia, or order it online from a site like Live Aquaria where they actually will tell you where it's from. The only thing you have to be careful with is say someone Live Aquaria, they also carry Indonesian elegances. Um, the problem with that is if they are in the same system as a, um, Indonesian elegance, they can actually contract the protozoan from the Indonesian elegance. So that is a major problem that you have to um, be careful of within the elegance family and corals like it. Um, as you've probably seen, New York Stilo, he got one with a, with what looked like a protozoan had taken over it, and he was one of the few that actually get it to rise back to health because the system is doing so healthy. 
and he was dipping it constantly to get rid of this problem. Um, so that's one disease you have to look for. Another thing is zoanthid eating protozoans. As you notice in my tank, I do not have any zoanthids. I came across that problem. Not only, I didn't get it actually from a zoanthid, I got it, it came in on another coral um, that I did not dip. I, from now on, I dip every coral that I get. Actually, the only coral I didn't dip that I've got was that right there, that chalice. Um, do not dip clams or anemones. They are inverts. They are not corals. They are not meant for coral RX. Um, the likelihood of them carrying anything that would affect your corals on them is slim to none. Um, clams can actually contract their, a different protozoan which attacks clams. So look in the same system as the clam. If one clam is dead, I'd wait wait a little bit and make sure no more, no more die off. Do not be in a hurry to pick up this clam. Even if it is the nicest clam, if there is another clam next to it dead, most likely it contracted a protozoan or it was stung from something. Um, this is one thing that I tend to be really careful with is acros. You get acro eating flatworms, it is a pain to get rid of. It is one of the hardest parasites to get rid of. Um, acro eating flatworms, you cannot tree interceptor and get rid of them. You have to dip everything constantly. Everything in your tank you have to dip. Otherwise the eggs actually can live through the dip and then when that happens you can get it. So you have to be extremely careful with acros. Um, this piece actually had a little bit of death on it. As you see there it is covered in coralline algae so I knew that it was long gone whatever problem it had whether the system that it was in went under some sort of stress or what but it is long gone and it now has growth tips luckily I've never had to deal with acro eating flatworms one thing I, ha I have had to deal with though is um, red bugs red bugs is honestly one of the easiest to treat I mean, if you get red bugs, it's not that big of a deal. Basically, um, you treat red bugs with interceptor, which you can get at your. Um, it's for dogs with heartworms, I think it is. Um, so you get it from your vet. Uh, you explain to them what it's for, and they can hook you up, hopefully. Um, and they can give you some interceptor to dose your tank with to get rid of the red bugs. Uh, I forget what it is in dogs. I think it's heartworms. But the red bugs are actually related to the parasite that lives in the dogs that the medicine gets rid of. So that is why it works in the tank. Basically what you do for this is you, you dose the interceptor, wait 24 hours, then you add carbon. Well, you turn off your protein skimmer to begin with, and then you, after 24 hours, you add carbon back into your system, and you turn on your protein skimmer and do a big water change to get rid of the interceptor. And that's basically all you do. Although it will kill your inverts, usually what I do is I take out my inverts, and I keep them in a 5-gallon bucket with a air stone and some fresh salt water. Um, so you want to make sure you get rid of all your inverts out before you actually dose interceptor. Um, I actually lost the cleaner shrimp because I forgot about him while I was dosing interceptor. So that was a pretty big loss. I got all my hermits and everything out, but it killed my cleaner shrimp. It will not kill your clam or your um, anemones, even though they are... Um, even though they are inverts, um, they they almost always make it through it. Um, red bugs usually target uh, flatter acros, um, flatter scaled acros. 
Um, I don't really know how to describe it, but this it's not really that big of a problem to overcome. And a lot of times coral wrecks and stuff like that, even if you do dip a coral, you can get um, red bugs. So that is a pretty big problem. I mean, it's an easy fix though. Flatworms in general um, are harder to get rid of. Acropora flatworms, Acropora eating flatworms are probably the hardest to get rid of. Um, red flatworms aren't that big of a deal. Um, flatworm exit usually gets rid of them. Uh, what else do we have? I mean, that's. I can go on and on. There's so many parasites in this hobby that you have to be careful with. I dip each and every one of my corals now. After I had my um, my zoanthid protozoan. I mean, luckily I got lucky and it was zoanthids, which I really don't like that much. Anyways, I contracted the protozoan on. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I dip every coral I get, and when I set up my new tank, even going from tank to tank in my house, I will dip corals. Usually it takes several months for an epidemic to break out. It won't happen right away. So I could have a problem in my tank and not even realize it just because the population hasn't jumped up yet and started killing things off or stressing them off, stressing them enough for me to notice. So, that's pretty much all I have to say. If you have any more questions about this, you see I added live rock up there. I mean dry rock. Um, if you have any more questions about this, just let me know. Um, I'll zoom in on this pink pastrata. And this is Finger Lab and Yell. And I am out. Peace.